Hello and welcome. In our sequence of videos on data pre-processing, today we're going to cover feature encoding. If you've been following the sequence, you know that we've already covered feature scaling, missing values, outlier treatment, and multicollinearity. And finally, we move to feature encoding, which is an important pre-processing step in almost all the real-world data sets. Why? Because most of the data that we deal with would have a mix of variables. We'll have some variables which are numerical in nature and some variables which are categorical in nature. And how to deal with these categorical features before we give an input to a model is what feature encoding is about. So we'll talk about it at length as we proceed. We're going to cover all about feature encoding, starting with what is feature encoding, why to perform feature encoding, choosing appropriate feature encoding, and what are the common mistakes to be avoided. And if you know, we typically emphasize on this because we tell you how to practically implement these things. Before you apply feature encoding, you need to be aware of the common mistakes that people make and what could be the consequences of those. And finally, we'll be covering the hands-on piece in Python. Let's get started. So to begin with, what is feature encoding? Conversion of categorical data or non-numeric data into numerical format primarily for providing input to the machine learning algorithms is called feature encoding. So let's say we have two tables here. The table on the left represents the categorical data. For example, you may subscribe to an OTT app where you may have favorite shows that you watch. Now, these shows could come from different genres. For example, you may be liking action, your friend likes comedy, and someone else likes sci-fi. Likewise, when you go to an e-retail website to make purchases, you may have favorite categories to browse through. For example, somebody might be interested in books, someone else might be interested in furniture, and there could be people who are very much interested in the electronics and the latest gadgets. Likewise, there could be a column in the data which talks about ratings, and these could be good, average, and poor. So if you see, there is a general format that these variables on the left follow. They all have string entries which are not directly numbers. So directly adding, subtracting these categories or performing arithmetic operations here won't be feasible. So we'll have to bring them to some numerical format before we give them as input to our models. And we'll discuss that. However, one more point that you want to be clear about, there could be such columns where there is no order. For example, your preference might be that you like action movies and someone else likes comedy movies. You can't say action is greater than comedy or comedy is better than action. It's a personal choice. Similarly, the categories of items that you want to browse through on a website can't have an order. If you like books, that's your preference. Someone else might be interested in electronics, and that's that individual's preference. You don't have an order here necessarily. But when it comes to ratings, you know this tends to give a sense of order. When you're saying something is good versus an average versus a poor, there is a sense of order here. So the categorical variables could be nominal when there is no sense of order or ordinal where there is an order. On the right, we have a very interpretable table, which is a collection of numbers. So we could be talking about time. We could be talking about a score obtained out of 100. We could be talking about distance from one place to another. All these places, we have numbers. And these numbers could be rounded off integers or could also be floating points, which may contain decimals. But end of the day, these are numbers. And we can meaningfully perform all arithmetic operations on these numbers. Let's now discuss why to perform feature encoding. Once again, so feature encoding is essential to prepare categorical data for machine learning, ensuring that it can be correctly interpreted by algorithms. It allows the model to extract valuable information contained in categorical variables while performing both supervised and unsupervised tasks. Whether you're talking about predicting an outcome or you're talking about studying patterns in the data, encoding becomes very, very important. Just on the previous slide, we discussed ratings as good, fair, and average. Now, there is no way that a model will be able to figure out the sense of order unless we supply it that way. Similarly, if there's a column which does not have an order and we try to bring it, that is again not going to be good. So we'll discuss this at length as we proceed. For now, just keep in mind that this is essential for our models to be given the right input. Choosing the appropriate feature encoding. Now, there are a couple of choices here. For example, we can perform something that's known as label encoding. We can perform one hot encoding. We can perform ordinal encoding, custom encoding, or target encoding. This is not an exhaustive list. We can have at least 10 more different types of encodings. But the bottom line is, if you know these many, you'll be sorted for more than 95% of the cases. Let's discuss each of these one by one. Coming to label encoding. First of all, label encoding is supposed to be used only for target variable. So if you're doing a predictive modeling task and your target column 
is categorical in nature, that's only when the label encoding is applicable. It converts the categories into numbers as per the alphabetical order. That's, again, an important point. It doesn't really rely on any other order, but goes by the alphabetical order. To look at an example, let's say we have a column, which is our target column. So a bank is interested in profiling the type of loan that's most appropriate for them to pitch to their prospects. So somebody who is an existing customer could be eligible for a home loan. Someone else could be eligible for a personal loan. We are deciding which is the most appropriate type of loan to be offered to a given prospect. Now, this kind of column that you're predicting could have these labels like home, personal, auto. Some other customer has home as a preferred option and auto. There could be more data, but we're just showing you first five rows. Now, if we apply label encoding on this, what will happen is it'll assign an alphabetical order. So alphabetically, A comes first. You'll get a zero for that. Then comes H, which is for home. So you get one wherever home was the preferred choice. And finally, P in the alphabetical order would be the last. So that would be given a value of two. It's kind of starting from the lowest to the highest alphabetical order. That's how the encoding is done. Now, this is totally acceptable for a target column because in the target column, these all will be seen as different categories and we retain this information in one column. Keep this in mind, label encoder is used only for the target column. In fact, label is just another name for the dependent variable in machine learning lingo. That's how we normally call it. Moving on to the next one hard encoding. Now, all these other encodings that I'm going to talk about are primarily applicable for the independent variables, the features which are explaining an outcome, or maybe just the features in case of an unsupervised learning where you are studying the patterns in the data. So one order encoding is used when categories within a column cannot be assigned in order. There is no order that exists. Each category is equally important. To look at an example, you may look at the same genre example. So we can't say that somebody's preference, that's action, is less important compared to somebody's preference that's comedy or the other way. Or sci-fi is better than action and comedy. We don't have a sense of order. It's an individual's preference. So in a data set, this might be one of the columns which is talking about an individual's preference. Whether this person prefers action, comedy, or sci-fi, these are the choices may be given. And this person has chosen one. Another person has chosen comedy. The next person has chosen sci-fi, so on and so forth. Now in this case, since we cannot give an order, giving equal importance to each category is important. How do we do that. We create three new columns for the three categories that we had in the genre column. Now, in order to fill these columns, we follow a simple rule. So wherever in our data we had action, these two places, in the action column here, we'll have to put a one and the remaining places will be filled as zero. Likewise, wherever in our data we had comedy, these two places, we'll put this as one and the remaining places will be filled with zeros. Likewise, wherever in our data we had sci-fi, we'll put that as one and the remaining places will be put as zeros. So eventually, if you apply it on all the columns, this is how your data would look like. Notice that the sum of each row in this case is one, because in our case, we just looked at one genre for a given viewer. Now, if we realize there is some information that's a bit redundant here. If we know any two features of the three, can we derive the third one? Let's say, for example, we blindfold the action piece. Now, can we guess where action would have been a one? In the first case, if it's not comedy, it's not sci-fi, and we only have three categories as possibilities, it must have been action. Similarly, in this case, when it's not comedy, not sci-fi, it must have been action. How about this case? When it's already known to be comedy and it's not sci-fi, it cannot be action because it's already known to be comedy. Likewise, for the last row, if you see, it's already known to be comedy, it's not sci-fi, so it has to be a zero for action as well. Similarly, in this case, it's not comedy, but it's known to be sci-fi. If that's the case, then it cannot be action. So action again will have to be zero. So in a way, in such cases, when you do one heart encoding, if you have N categories in a column and you create N new columns, you don't need n columns. You can figure out the nth column by using the n minus one columns. Generally, we drop the first feature there. So this is a practice. This is also called dummy variable encoding. So we are kind of converting a categorical column into these dummy variables. And there is a concept of a dummy variable trap, basically, which indicates that we may not need to use all the features that we've derived. We can manage with n minus one features. If we had n categories, n minus one columns would capture the necessary information. And we are not losing that information because it's automatically implied.
This is called one hot encoding. Now, there could be times when we actually have an order in the features, like some kind of ratings, and we want to retain that order. For example, let's say we have these kind of ratings in a column, which capture ratings anywhere from poor to excellent, everything else in between. Now, in this case, if we do one hot encoding, it may not be a fair idea because you'll lose a sense of order. So how to deal with such scenarios where we want to maintain a sense of order? We may want to give an order as per the rating. And there are ways, we'll discuss this in the hands-on piece. In Python, generally, the indexing starts from zero. So you can give it ratings from zero to four because we have five levels, the so zero to four would suffice. This is called an ordinal encoding. An extension of ordinal encoding could be a custom encoding. Custom encoding would be applicable when you don't want to go linearly. For example, you don't want to call it zero, one, and two. Maybe you know that high in case of, let's say you're doing a credit risk assessment, high has much greater impact compared to medium and low. With your subject matter knowledge, have relative weightages for these. And how do you assign that? That's something which could be done through a custom encoding. Ordinal encoding would always go in a linear way, 0, 1, and 2. Custom encoding could be allowing me to say that high is three times more severe compared to medium, and medium is three times more compared to low. This is a very custom weightage that we have given here. We use this encoding when a column follows an order, but the order needs to be weighted in a custom way. Now moving to the last encoding that we're going to cover, it is known as the target encoding. It is used to transform categorical variable based on the mean or some central tendency of the target target variable. What is a target variable? The dependent variable or the label. Generally preferred when the categorical variable has very high cardinality, which means there are too many categories. In such cases, we prefer to apply target encoding. And we'll discuss more on this as we go to the hands-on piece. So let's look at an example of target encoding. We are trying to predict sales. And one of the features that we are trying to encode is state. Now state has 50 categories. So would you get 50 different columns in your data? 50 minus one would be, N minus one would be 49 in this case, but 49 columns could be a lot of columns to deal with at once. So in such cases, Compared to one-hot encoding, we would prefer performing a target encoding. In the hands-on piece, we'll also show you multiple ways to deal with such scenarios, which is a common occurrence in most of the data sets. Let's take a better example of target encoding. Let's say we have some data related to an individual's preferred genre, the plan or the subscription. The OTT services generally come with multiple options. How many devices do you want access to and things like that? And then there is a prediction that's being made on whether a customer would renew the subscription or not. So one means the subscription would be renewed and zero means the subscription would not be renewed. So in this case, when we talk about encoding, we don't have to worry about the plan feature. Why? Because this is already numeric. We'll instead have to worry about the column called genre. And when we come to a list of genres, you can come up with a list of 20 odd genres as well. How do you actually go ahead and encode? Let's look at this with the help of this simple example where you only have three categories right now. How do you go about doing that? So first of all, it would require us to calculate some probabilities. So if you are asked, can we find out the probability of renewal given that the person follows action genre. So which means we are focusing on only the records which belong to action genre. In whatever data is visible to us, there are three such instances of action genre being a preferred genre, out of which two times the renewal has happened. So can we say the probability of this is going to be two by three, right? And likewise, can we look at the overall probability or global probability of renewal, assuming that we have only just this much data. So we will only be looking at the renewal column now. And you can see out of six instances, three times the subscription has been renewed. So the overall probability of renewal is three by six, three times out of total six times. Now, target encoding is an elaborate concept, but to tell you in a nutshell, it uses a blended probability. It gives a relative weightage to the genre or the category, and it gives a weightage to the average belonging to the global scenario. And this is a weighted average kind of a concept. So where you have W1 times the probability of renewal given a genre plus the global mean or global average with a certain weightage and you're dividing it by its total. This is done to ensure that for those records which have minimal occurrences, for example, sci-fi in our data just occurs once, we do not make wrong decisions. As per this looks like that if somebody has sci-fi as the preferred genre, this person will never renew. But would that be the case? We have very limited representation of sci-fi here. So in those cases also, when we calculate the blended probability, we will be able to find out some weightage for sci-fi given the overall app. will not be just overshadowed by the limited occurrences of sci-fi. Plus, there is a problem known as the data leakage. To avoid that, target encoding has some built-in intelligence. But we'll talk about it at the appropriate stage. Right now, since we lack the necessary background, we'll not go too deep into it. As we progress through the course, we'll also be talking about K-fold target encoding and leave one out target encoding. These are essentially advanced concepts that build a little further on this. But since as of now, we don't have the necessary background, we'll not delve too deep into these. 
Now let's move on to the common mistakes to be avoided. In a way, you already got a hint related to that. So let's say if we use these encodings interchangeably, will that be wrong? For example, let's say we use ordinal encoding in place of one hot encoding. We introduce an order when there is none. Same example, genre. If we start giving it an ordinal encoding, which is something based on the alphabetical order, maybe, we'll say action will always be given zero because A comes first, then comes C as in comedy. So you'll give it one and sci-fi comes last. So you'll give it two. But are we not in a way suggesting the machine learning algorithms that sci-fi is carrying a lot of weightage compared to action? And is there actually any such comparison that we can do? Not really. So this would be wrong input to the model. What if we do it the other way? For example, if we use one hot encoding in place of ordinal encoding. So you had these kind of ratings, good, average, and poor, and you start giving them all equal importance. Are you not hiding information from the algorithm by doing this? Because right now, the way you've given this input is suggesting the algorithm that good, average, and poor are all equally important. So changing the encoding types would lead your model to suffer. Why? Because it would not get the right intelligence in the form of inputs. Our machine learning models will struggle to make sense out of these variables if the encoding is not right. So it's very, very important to give the right encoding. In my experience, I've seen examples where people have encoded months of a calendar year from January to December in an order from 1 to 12. That suggests that December is always going to be 12-fold more compared to January. And if you bring it to the right order, order, if you say that all the months are equally important, the things are very different. In a regression problem, the R square value jumped from a 42% to an 84% by just choosing the right encoding, not giving an order when there is none present. With this, we come to an end of the theory piece. We'll do the hands-on in the next video. And that will be a detailed hands-on covering each type of encoding that we have theoretically introduced here. You will get complete understanding of how to apply it. Thank you.